In this video, we're going to talk about how to compute the derivative of a product. So two functions multiplied together. Um, so we saw in the last video that you could take the derivative of a sum or difference, uh, and the derivative was equal to the sum of their derivatives. Will this hold for products? So we're just going to try. Um, so let's think about uh, an easy one that we know. Okay, so if we think of the function x cubed, then... Um, we know that the derivative here should be 3x squared, okay? But let's think about x cubed as x squared times x, right? We could think about this as a product. So here's my first function. Here's my second function. So let's say is f prime equal to the derivative of each part multiplied together. Okay, so um, we'll just check. So um, I'm going to put a little question mark above here. So is it equal to the derivative of x squared times the derivative of x? So we know the derivative of x squared. Oops go up here. We know the derivative of x squared is 2x, and we know the derivative of x is 1, so we get 2x, okay, which is not equal to what we know the derivative is. Okay, so does this seem like it holds for products? Not at all, unfortunately. So because of this, we have something called the product rule. Um, so there is a way to take derivatives of um, things that are multiplied together. So if f of x is u of x times v of x, and both of these functions are differentiable, then f prime of x, you can do by doing um, the derivative of each one at a time. Okay, so u prime of x times v of x as it was, and then adding the derivative of v of x times u of x as it was. Okay, so you do the derivative um, of each part separately, and you so you take the derivative of the first part um, times the second part as it was, plus the derivative of the second part times the first part as it was. So this, I sometimes write this, maybe I'll write it over here. So if we want the derivative of a first function multiplied by a second function, then it's going to be the derivative of the first, okay, times by the second as it was, and then add the derivative of the second multiplied by the first function as it was. Okay, so you want to say that in your head a lot so that you start to remember and you don't need to look this stuff up. Um, I left this space here because I'm going to try to um, explain this why this might be the case. Uh, I don't want to call this a proof because I'm not actually going to prove it. Um, so let's maybe call it a justification or actually I won't call it anything. So because we have a product, we can think of f of x as an area. Okay, so it's going to be some u of x times some v of x. Okay, so we have this sort of rectangle, okay, and this maybe is u, and this is v. Now we could imagine that as time passes that this gets bigger. So f prime of x, uh, because f of x is area here, it would be the change in the area. Okay, and here maybe we think over time or something. So maybe the area is getting bigger. Okay, so if we um, let this sort of continue um, growing, okay, so then this would be our u at time um, x plus h, okay, and our v at time x plus h. 
So the first thing I want to say, so we get, so the this is the main area. Um, so this part is f of x. So the change in the area is going to be um, these parts here. Okay, so that's actually how much we've changed. Um, so this part here is actually um, going to be very small. As h gets small, um, this part is small on both sides. So the area is going to be very small. So we can almost ignore this. Negligible. Okay, so we can kind of ignore that part. Okay, and then um, this part here, okay, is going to have area. So the one side is V of X, okay, and the other side is U of X plus H minus U of X because we want um, this distance here. Or sorry, I lied. Um, that's not what I wanted. Um, we want this distance here on that side. Okay, so that is this part here. Um, so similarly, um, this part over here This part over here is going to have one length that's u of x and the other length is going to be v of x plus h minus v of x. So if we think about the limit definition without actually doing it, okay, so it's going to be the limit as h goes to zero, it's going to be the difference in the area over uh, what h is. So this, this difference in area are just these parts that I mentioned. Okay, so we're going to have h. Um, so I need to add up the blue part. So v of x times u of x plus h minus u of x. And then I need to add the other one, which is u of x times v of x plus h minus v of x. Um, and then we're, the green part we're just ignoring because that's going to basically go to zero as h gets really small. Um, so if I rewrite this, I can write it as v of x times u of x plus h minus u of x all over h and then add a separate limit of um, u of x times v of x plus h minus v of x all over h. So I'm pulling out the sort of thing that's multiplied on the front. And now because um, v of x here does not depend on h, it acts like a constant, so I can actually pull it out, and the same with the u of x in this limit. Okay, so if we remove that bit, and we just think about the limit as h goes to zero of that part, well, this is the limit definition for the derivative of u. Okay, so this is going to be v of x times u prime of x. And over here, we're going to have u of x, and then what we have left over, okay, is this part, which looks like the limit definition of v of x, and it in fact is. We're taking the limit as h goes to zero. So this is times v of x. So this is where the formula sort of comes from. Um, this is not a proof. It's just to try and convince you that why this formula might be true. So hopefully that is enough. You would never have to reproduce this on any testing situation or anything like that. Um, let's do the previous example and make sure that just to verify the formula. Okay, so here... Um, the x squared can be my u, okay, and the x can be my v. So f prime of x should be u prime of x times v of x plus v prime of x times u of x. So that's going to be the derivative of u. So the derivative of x squared is 2x times by v as it was. So that's times by x. Derivative of v of x is 1 
times by u of x as it was, so x squared. Simplifying, so this is 2x squared plus x squared, so we get 3x squared, okay, which we know is the derivative, okay, so that, that checks out. Okay, so this formula seems better than the, the one that we hoped for at the beginning. Okay, let's do a few examples. Um, so notice in all of these, actually, I could um, compute the derivative by simply expanding the function. Okay, so we could put this 5x squared through to this bracket, and then I would, could take the derivative without the product rule. That's fine. Um, but here we're going to use the product rule just to practice um, using it. Okay, so let's let, um, so u of x is 3x minus 4, and v of x is 5x squared. Okay, so if you want, you can compute the derivatives uh, in advance. So the derivative of u is just 3, and the derivative of v is 10x. So f prime of x is going to be u prime, so 3, times v as it was, so times 5x squared, plus the derivative of v, which is 10x, times u as it was. So that's 3x minus 4. Maybe I'll just write that above. So this is u prime times v plus v prime times u. So if we simplify, this is 15x squared. Uh, here I'm going to have to put the brackets, put this through. Um, okay, so it's going to be 30x squared uh, minus 40x. Um, which we've put these together is going to be 45x squared minus 40x. Okay, and you would get the exact same derivative if you expanded first and then took the derivative, which would be the better way to do this problem. Okay, we're just practicing the product rule here. Okay, let's try another one. So again, we could foil this out. Um, probably would be faster to do it that way. But let's use the product rule. So we let u be root x plus x squared, and v is going to be 4x cubed minus 7. So now if we take the derivatives, u prime is 1 over 2 root x plus 2x. So just remember here that this is x to the 1 half. So when we take the derivative, it's going to be 1 half x to the minus 1 half which is what this is here. Uh, and then if we take the derivative of v, we just get 4 times 3x squared, which is 12x squared. Okay, so then g prime of x is going to be u prime, so 1 over 2 root x plus 2x times v of x as it was, plus the derivative of v of x, times u of x as it was. Oops, minus, minus, minus. And that should be also minus, sorry. Oops. Okay. And now we're going to want to simplify. We're going to have to expand. So because we have to do this expanding anyway, that's why I said it's better to expand first. Okay, so... We're going to have to um, foil this guy. So we're going to get um, 2x to the th 3 minus 1 half is 5 halves. And then we have um, minus 8x to the 4. And then we have minus 7 over 2 root x and then plus 14x. And then here we have to expand this through. So we're gonna get plus 12, and then x squared plus x to the 1 half is gonna be x to the 5 halves. And then minus 12x to the 4. Okay, now I can look for common fact, common or like terms, sorry. Um, so I see some, I think that's it. So we put those together, so we get 14x to the 5 halves 
minus 20 x to the 4 minus 7 over 2 root x plus 14x. Okay, that would be our derivative. Okay, one more example here. So this one is 3 over x squared plus 5x all squared. So remember when you have all squared, you can think about it as this function multiplied by itself. Okay, so here that means that u of x is going to be equal to v of x. And I'm going to rewrite it. So 3 over x squared is 3x to the minus 2. Okay, so that means that u prime of x is equal to v prime of x, which is going to be negative 6x to the minus 3 um, plus 5. So now <clears throat> when we do h prime of x, it's going to be the derivative times the function. Maybe I'll just do it with the negative exponents all the way through. Okay, and then add the derivative, which is the exact same derivative, um, <clears throat> times the function, which is exactly the same. So because I'm adding up the same thing twice, I'm just getting two of these. Oops, I don't need to do it again. Um, <clears throat> so this is, maybe I want to write, so this is 2 um, u prime of x times u of x. Okay, um, but maybe we want to expand it. Um, so we'd have to FOIL here. So I'm just practicing. I don't know why I'm doing the arrows the opposite way. Let's do them the proper way. Okay, so this is 2 times, so it's going to be negative 18, and I add the exponent, so x to the negative 5, minus 30, x to the negative 2, plus 15, x to the negative 2, and then plus 25x. So if I put the 2, oh, I have some like terms here. Um, so those two can go together. So this is a minus 15x to the minus 2. And then if I put the 2 through, I'm going to have minus 36 over x to the 5, um, minus 30 over x squared, plus 50x would be my answer. Now, um, I wrote this formula in red here because that actually is always the case. Um, so this is sort of another rule you could think of if you want. Um, so suppose we want to take the derivative of uh, a function times itself, okay, using the product rule. So f of x is g of x times g of x. So that's g of x squared. So then your u is equal to your v, which is equal to g of x, and u prime is equal to v prime, which is also equal to g of x. So then, when you take the derivative, you're going to have the derivative of u, so g prime of x, times v, which is, maybe I'll write this, so u prime times v, plus v prime times u. Um, now over here, this is going to look the exact same, because v prime is equal to u prime, and u is equal to v. So what you end up getting is 2 times the derivative of g times g itself. Okay, so you could, if you wanted, use this formula to um, get to the derivative a little bit faster. Okay, so this is a derivative of a square. Um, so if you want the derivative of g prime, or sorry, g of x all squared, it's going to be 2 times g of x times g prime of x. Okay, now, uh, we could also do this for higher powers of g, um, but then the product rule gets a bit messy. Uh, and there's actually another rule that handles this much better. Okay, so this the other rule is called the um, chain rule. 
Okay, but we don't have that yet. So for now, we would have to use this idea, use a product rule. Um, but I'm just going to write here, um, not necessary to remember this rule as it will um, be a direct result of the chain rule. Okay, so once we get to the chain rule, which is a few sections from now, um, you won't need to remember this. It's, this is just a direct application of the chain rule. Um, but for now, it uses a product rule, which the product rule um, could take a lot of time, sort of as we saw in part C here, um, because of all the expanding that we had to do. Um, it wasn't so straightforward. But uh, anyway, so that's the product rule and a few examples uh, and then a corollary of it.